In the classic debate of sub versus dub, the dubs produced by Animax Asia probably aren't the ones being talked about. I mean, just listen to this. I was careless. The laser was configured. It had dispersed and become harmless. These dubs are in a category of their own, and their abysmal quality makes them too funny to even hate on. I was surprised that no one has made a video diving into what Animax Asia is and why their dubs are so horrible. So let me guide you through the world of these rare dubs that most people have forgotten about. Animax Asia is a television channel that, as the name suggests, broadcasts Japanese anime content to a variety of Asian countries, specifically South and Southeast Asia. In fact, it was the first television channel in Asia, outside of Japan, to be anime only. Animax Asia belonged to the international corporation Sony. Yes, that Sony that just loves to flag YouTube videos. So please subscribe until 2020. In this video, we'll be focusing on when it was Sony's property because ironically, that's when Animax Asia had zero quality control and tried to cut costs as much as possible, which gave us masterpieces like this one. I can't tell you that. You'll have to figure it out. Get off your knees. Stand up and move forward. You're lucky enough to have two legs, aren't you? You have yourself. What else do you need? Animax Asia, based in Singapore, you know, the place where old ladies go to buy knockoff Gucci and Versace, became available in January of 2004 to Hong Kong audiences first. It rapidly expanded throughout South and Southeast Asia and was a huge success among teenage and adolescent audiences, beating even Cartoon Network Asia during anime's emergence into mainstream popular culture. The channel broadcasts anime in Japanese with subtitles, English dubs, and dubs in the languages of certain Asian countries as well. Usually, the English dubs that they show are the same ones that everybody else has access to, like Funimations. However, in the past, Animax Asia sometimes acquired rights to a show before American Studios did. For example, this happened with One Piece. Or acquired rights to shows that were not licensed to American Studios. When either of these cases happened, Animax Asia had no choice but to create their own English dubs. And that, my friends, is where the story gets really interesting, but where the information gets a bit tricky. Animax Asia is restricted to, well, Asia, and information about their exclusive region-locked dubs is difficult to find. In fact, much of Animax Asia's dubs are now lost media. For example, their mid-2000s dub of Dragon Ball has completely disappeared, and no clips of it exist online. The studios and voice actors behind these English dubs often go uncredited. Even the term voice actor is quite a stretch. Studios would often hire English-speaking foreigners, like university students, or just about anyone who could read and talk in English. Imagine your most awkward classmate doing the voiceover for a famous character like Goku. In the world of Animax Asia, something like that could actually happen. One of the known studios that provided dubs to Animax Asia is Odex, based once more in Singapore. Keep in mind that this Singaporean studio's dub was aired all across South and Southeast Asia, not just restricted to Singapore. That point will make sense in a little bit. According to anime productions expert Justin Savakis, Odex charged prices that were ridiculously low where a standard American dub might cost between 6,000 to 10,000 USD per episode, Odex was charging around 2,500. Obviously, we know where this is going. A studio that charges not even half of the lower end production cost is cutting corners somewhere. And of course that shows up in the final product, pun not intended. 
In fact, most of the voice actors who did the dubbing received no acting training or had backgrounds in any form of acting. Compare that to Japanese voice actors who have to basically go to voice acting school and perform well for the chance at being cast. Some other odd features of Animax Asia English dubs include that voice actors could be changed in the middle of a season to someone who sounded completely different. And it was common for one voice actor to do the parts of multiple characters in the same show. The highest number I encountered was 9, and there could very well be actors who did far more. Here's a clip from Odex's English dub of One Piece. Many of the voice actors here had to cover more than 5 roles at once. And as I mentioned earlier, this dub was aired all across the Animax Asia channel. You don't want anybody to get hurt. Well, honestly, neither do I. I've seen too much bloodshed. I don't want to see any more. But your people are going to be fighting against the leader of the King's Seven Ocean Warriors. And you're hoping nobody's going to get hurt? Luffy, will you shut up and think about BB's feelings? Come on! So then, why did Animax Asia English dubs end up like this? Couldn't a large corporation like Sony afford to pay a little bit more for a better product? Animax Asia functioned more as their own entity rather than an offshoot of Sony, so they had to make do with limited finances. Despite their success, without Sony pumping much money into the channel, they had to rely on local advertisers to pay off their expenses and to make a profit. As a result, Animax Asia simply could not afford to hire American studios to do the dubbing for them. Studios in countries like Singapore and Hong Kong offered cheap English dubs, and so they were given the job. Additionally, in American English dubs, Japanese studios and licensors are often involved in the productions. They may look over translations, pronunciations, or run general reviews on the dubs. In the case of Animax Asia, however, Japanese checking was nearly non-existent, if at all present. The dubs were produced with entire freedoms given to small studios to create their own translations and modify the language to basically whatever they wanted, resulting in dubs like ghost stories. Yes, the sports festival. That's what this whole episode's about. Okay, let's stop breaking the third wall. They're thinking about canceling the sports festival! Despite all this cost-cutting, Animax Asia's low-quality dubs didn't stop people from enjoying them. In fact, people who grew up in the 2000s and mid-2010s have fond memories of the dubs, and there are many ongoing searches into recovering those dubs that have long since faded into region-locked obscurity. Reddit user Kakasai427 recollects, In Malaysia, English dubs were very uncommon, and growing up in a household that mostly spoke in English, Animax was the best thing. I would often come home in the evening to watch Yu Yu Hakusho, Dragon Ball, and a few others. For some Malaysians, it was their gateway to other anime that would never be aired on our strict local channels. I didn't really pay attention that the voice acting was stiff and hammy, that the script was plain and bland, or that the audio was wonky. For a teenage English-speaking Malaysian, Animax dubs were that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And so, that's a short history on the craziness of Animax Asia's English dubs. With the internet more widespread, there isn't a need for these dubs anymore, and so their production has stopped. Animax Asia does still create dubs in other languages, like Tagalog and Hindi, but their English dubs were really something else. I hope you enjoyed this video! Please leave a like and subscribe for more anime-related content! And feel free to leave a comment if you have any suggestions, thoughts, or just want to say hello. Join our Discord if you want to keep up to date with announcements, or just chill with us over there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again in the next video. Bye bye!